In this video, we are going to discuss the best lenses for sports videography in 2023. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. What is up? Welcome back. Pete here. <laughs> what is up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Pete Gottschalk, videographer and content producer for Major League Baseball. In this video, like I said, I want to go over the best lenses, both nice and on a budget. If you are familiar with my content before, I have done a video exactly like this, and that was almost two years ago now. So I figured I'd go back, clean it up for the new year, do it in the same style of format because I do think it was simple for you guys and it provided value for y'all. In this one, I am going to go over the same kind of format with the sports, but then I'm also gonna give you a industry standard lens and then a lens that is a little bit cheaper for y'all, just in case you don't wanna break the bank on, on the industry standard lens. And to preface this, I'm gonna start with the first four sports that I'm mostly familiar with. If you are a shooter of hockey or, or sports that I don't have much experience in, cricket, things like that, please comment below lenses that you think are, are good starter lenses or lenses that would be great for an all-encompassing experience shooting that sport. So I'm going to start off with football the best lenses for football. Now this is tricky because the field is obviously so large and you're gonna be in a lot of scenarios where players are up close and far away. So if we want one lens that I believe that you should get for football that is the industry standard, it would be the 7200. Most cameras now are capable of shooting 4K, so if you can't get as tight at 200 and, and guys on the other side of the field, things like that, you can punch in a little bit, get it, get away with it at the beginning. It's not ideal, but it works. If you need one lens, do the 7200 f 2.8. Canon and Sony make one, I'm sure Nikon does too. This lens is gonna be pretty, pretty pricey, but it, it's a great all around lens for not just football, but a lot of other sports too, and I'll get into that later. Now, if you're looking for budget options for both Canon and Sony, the 24 to 240, not a fixed aperture lens from Sony is going to be a good option for you, both used and new. You're gonna be able to get it for significantly cheaper than the 7200. This also gives you that wide length and you can use it in the huddle or at timeouts. You can get coaches on the sideline up close. That 24 will allow you to go really wide. And then also zoomed in at 240, it obviously offers you more length than the 7200 which will help you a little bit. Now, the reason it is cheaper is because it is a non-fixed aperture lens, which means as you zoom in and out, your aperture is going to change. Unlike the 7200 and other nice lenses, it will stay at a fixed exposure from that aperture. You're gonna have to adjust your settings a lot when you're zooming in and out on a lens like this, but it is cheaper. And if you're just getting in the game, it's a great option. For Canon, 55 to 250 stock lens is gonna be great. It's pretty much the same concept as the Sony I just mentioned, not fixed aperture. And also I believe something like a 70 to 300 would work as well for Canon. So yeah, those are just some focal lengths. Anything where you see the aperture has a range, that is gonna be a cheaper lens for telephoto. So try that out maybe. Now for basketball. Basketball is a sport I shot a lot of at Georgia, both men and women's. And there's pretty much one focal length here or two that really makes sense. And that would be the 24 to 70 f 2.8 that would be the industry standard lens focal length that i'm going to be recommending canon and sony both make one i'm sure nikon does too for not just only basketball it's going to be most useful for pretty much all scenarios i use this lens all the time when i'm shooting baseball when i'm shooting pregame stuff when i'm shooting weddings i've used it i mean it's one of the best all-around focal lengths you can have so if you're really looking for one lens to buy for anything if you're freelancing 24 to 70 is gonna be great. It goes the same with photographers too, not just videography. It's great in low light. It's gonna give you that wide length, but also that medium focal length. That is like the holy grail of lenses in my opinion. If you need one lens to buy, buy that. For basketball, when you're under the hoop and things are coming at you fast and they're gonna be close up with you, you're in timeouts, things like that, you're gonna get fans as you turn around. 24, you need that wide angle, wider angle. This is gonna be the best focal length for you. And sometimes in gyms, I've shot in some high school gyms, I've shot in ba Georgia basketball gyms. The lighting is terrible in some of these gyms. So like having that F 2.8 to be able to go low is gonna be good. You do have some alternatives here. It's gonna be a lot tougher when you're shooting in, in low light gyms, especially if you're just starting out and you're just shooting rec ball and, and high school and things like that. The lighting is gonna be terrible. So these cheaper lenses are gonna be a lot tougher on you. One that I really did like and that we use at Georgia all the time, albeit with a speed booster, was the Canon 24 to 105. It's just the stock lens. I think it's F4 naturally. That is a good alternative. There's other alternatives for Sony. You can get an 18 to 135. On my crop sensor camera, I believe I had like an 
18 to 105 f4 and that was great for my crop sensor camera my a6300 when i was in college but it's f4 like i said it's kind of tough sometimes when you are in, in a bad gym the lighting is going to be tough you're going to have to crank your iso a lot so just keep that in mind when you're buying a budget lens for basketball volleyball whatever those sports that take place in those types of gyms are now for baseball and softball and of course you guys do know that I have a ton of experience in this field. And I'd say the one lens that you would get is the same thing in line with football. It'd be 7200 as the industry standard lens that I would recommend. F2.8, the shallower the better on that aperture, especially if you're shooting games at night. Keep that in mind, this lens will allow you to go a little wider if you're on a smaller field, such as a softball field or a youth baseball field. Going back to 70 will provide you enough space there. But then also if you're shooting college baseball or something like that, 200 allows you to get up there and get the whole batter in frame. It's a little tougher on certain big league fields or minor league fields because there's more foul territory, the stadiums are bigger, your photo wells are gonna be a little farther away. So if you're shooting minor league baseball, college baseball, professional softball at that level, I'm shooting from the crowd, you're gonna be a lot further away. Just keep that in mind at 7200. My budget lenses are gonna be the same as they are for football, which would be a 55 to 250 from Canon, 7300 or a 24 to 240 for Sony mirrorless cameras. It really all depends on what you want and how much you're willing to spend and what you're shooting. If you're shooting a lot of night games, then maybe spending that extra couple hundred bucks on the nice lens will make a big difference for you. Now let me get into soccer. I've shot a lot of it. I shot it at Georgia and then I also worked for DC United for a summer and that was an amazing experience and I learned a lot about shooting soccer. Soccer's a bit different than football. You'd think it's similar, but it's not. Field's gonna be a lot, a lot bigger. You're going to need to frame things a little differently because the ball's gonna bounce around a lot. So it's tough to keep things in focus, especially if you're not on a shoulder camera. One lens I do recommend would be the Sony 100 to 400. It's very expensive, but the pitch is so large, especially if you're on the opposite side of the field. It's super useful to have that 400 length, but also that 100 that you can zoom out if, if they're coming towards you and go. Just to have that dynamic ability to do both, is perfect if you're on one end of the field. I don't think you could get away with a 7200. If you're shooting youth soccer, probably you could, but 7200 is not gonna be tight enough for you. I don't think you're gonna be able to use it as much. The only way I could see you getting away with a 7200 is if you have one shooter at one end of the field and a shooter at the other end. That might help you out because clearly you don't need to get the action at the other end if you're on one end. A Canon 200 to 400 would also work. That is very expensive. Same thing goes for the budget lenses. I think a 24 to 240 on a Sony would work. Keep in mind that you're gonna be zoomed in a lot because the pitch is so large. So that aperture is going to be as high as it can be, meaning you have to crank up your ISO quite a bit. Just keep these things in mind, what time of day you're shooting at, how large the pitch is, if it's, it's, if, if it's youth or college level or professional, whatever it be, you're probably gonna need a little bit more than a 7200. For a budget, for Canon, a 70 to 300 also works, or a 55 to 250 might also help you. But I would go a little more. If you're constantly shooting soccer, I would get like a 300 or a 200 or 400 Canon, or a 7200 with an extender. That also might work as well. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, y'all. I hope I was able to provide some value. Like I said, if you are a videographer, if you shoot hockey, if you shoot cricket, if you shoot sports that I did not mention here, please comment below. It would be of great help. I, I don't wanna make a mistake and tell someone to get a thousand dollar lens for a sport that I have no experience in because then you're out a thousand dollars and the lens is wrong. And I don't want that on my conscience. Thanks for watching anyways, y'all. Like and subscribe and I hope everyone has a great new year.